16, two things happened in quick succession that shaped my life. I painted the best painting I'd ever painted, and two weeks later, my father came to me and said, I've spoken to your art teacher, and you'll never make money as a professional artist. <laughs> I was devastated. My dream of going to art college was dashed in a second. And instead of rebelling and standing on a table and shouting, oh captain, my captain, or tearing up a textbook, or putting a gun to my head, I did something even worse. I suppressed my creativity, my essence, my soul. And in the process, I went to university and triggered the darkest period of my life. I was sick. I couldn't eat. And so I drank. I remember I woke up every morning, and for the first few seconds I felt okay. And then I realized I'd have to eat, and I felt sick again. It was not an easy part of my life. But what I realized is that Sir Kevin Robinson, who uh, gave the most popular uh, TED talk ever, Schools Killed Creativity, is not entirely correct. You can't kill creativity. You can't kill it, I can't kill it, schools can't kill it. Creativity is an abundant resource that we all have access to. You can turn your back on it, you can suppress it, you can walk away from it, but it's still there. And it manifests through the projects we do, in the business we work in, in art, or it will manifest in diseases. Every wisdom culture in the world talks about a duality that exists in us, whether you call it the unconscious and the conscious mind, the masculine and the feminine, the head and the heart, the intellect and the intuition, yin and yang, doesn't really matter. What matters is whether you can connect to your essence, whether you can connect to your soul, whether you can enable yourself to connect to that, get out of your head and remove the things in your personal unconscious so you connect to the collective unconscious, what Carl Jung called the collective unconscious, and then creativity flows through I started to paint again after 14 years on the slab, not far from here. And the first paintings I painted were more art therapy than real art. And the first time I painted, I cried, and I cried, and I cried again, because I'd lost something which was dearly important to me. And then a friend said to me, go and get drunk, then paint. So I did. The next time I went to Italy, I painted, I, I got drunk every night for three nights, and I painted from 10 p.m. through to 3 a.m. And then I woke up the following morning and I looked at the painting and I was shocked. And I wondered who had painted this painting. And this was the first painting I ever sold. So I thought, well, that's not bad, I'll do it again. So I got drunk and I painted a second painting. And I sold that as well. And then I realized I had a problem. <laughs> because I was originally uh, drinking to escape painting, and now I was drinking to enable painting. So I spent the next 10 years exploring how you can get into a state of creative flow without getting drunk or using drugs. So I explored yoga, I explored Ayurveda, I explored Tantra, I explored meditation retreats, I explored um, metaphysical retreats, I explored breathing. And every time I did that, I unlocked something in myself. And as I unlocked something in myself, I became more adventurous. I started to paint outside. Initially, what I painted was sunflowers and poppy fields and barley fields. And then I started to paint lakes and the oceans. And what I discovered is everything in nature is waves. And as I painted more and more, I became more adventurous. I started to paint in gale force winds. I started to paint in tropical storms. I even painted in a blizzard. And what I observed when I painted in a blizzard is that my mindset was in correlation to the environment. There was a, a liaison between the two. And as I began to discover this, what I realized was that the wind was shaping the brushstroke, that the paint was merging with the snow. And one time I painted uh, near Mont Blanc, and the, the clouds covered the mountains, and the, the, the wind said to me, wind, I'm more powerful than the clouds, I'm more powerful than the mountain, because I can remove and blow away the wind and reveal the mountain to you. And that's exactly what it did over those five hours. So I began to realize that there was a really powerful connection between us and the environment. And I realized that that the act of creation does not stop at the edge of the canvas. In fact, the whole world is a canvas 
a blank canvas on what you can create. So what I've started to explore now is that there's a connection between this and what organizations are doing. So I've started to help individuals, teams, and organizations to unlock their creativity and serve a greater purpose. And over the last few years, I've helped hundreds of people around the world to articulate their personal purpose, and dozens of teams to do exactly the same. This is me last week in Esalen on the west coast of the States, recording a, a, a series of videos which will turn into an application so that thousands of people can now have access and work out what their personal purpose is. More recently, uh, well, and then a friend asked me, uh, why don't you write a book? So I did. In fact, you could say I wrote the book five times because my editor kept on saying you need to rewrite it and rewrite it until it flows like a painting. The book's about purpose. How can leaders, teams, and organizations put purpose at the heart of everything they do? Most recently, I've started to explore collaborative paintings. This is one which we did last week at Esalen on the west coast of the States, but we've done them in Silicon Valley, New York a couple of times, Zurich, Warsaw, Geneva, up in the mountains and they're extraordinary experiences. And, and I've also started to look at how can I help individuals to do the same. This was me a couple of weeks ago, a friend asked me if I'd help him to paint. And I did this with, um, some of you may know, with the guy in Bullock, and I helped, was helping him to paint. And now what we're exploring is how can we do large-scale collaborative paintings with organizations like UNEC, uh, the United Smart uh, um, Cities, um, Esalen and the Shocker. Thank you very much.